Realtree's Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Cabela's, Cuddyback, America's Best Bowstrings, Drake Non-Typical, Easton Arrows, Frigid Forage, Fuse, Grizzly Coolers, Hoyt, Hoyman Tree Saws, Lone Wolf Tree Stands, Nikon, Ozonics, Redneck Blinds, RTP Outdoors, Spot Hog Releases, Wasp Archery, Viking Solutions, and Realtree. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail Southeast today. Um, we're here finishing up my plots. Uh, got the rest of them done last weekend. I'll show y'all some footage of them here in a minute. We're gonna go back there and check on them. Um, I've got my brother and one of his friends up here helping me today. We're gonna plant some more of this frigid forage here on the right hand side. Last year, uh, the clover stayed in here and up on top of the ridge here at one of our better stands. So we're just kind of coming here and reseeding where the clover just kind of died out this summer when it got too hot. We're going to plant it with Big and Beastie. Been checking some trail cameras. Um, things have kind of died down for us here. Uh, the Gap Buck, who we were hoping to be able to hunt on the Velvet Hunt, uh, he's been using a lot of the neighbor's property. You can drive up down the road and see him, which has made me real nervous. Uh, as far as I know, he's still there. I get pictures once or twice a week of him. Um, the split buck's hanging out with him. And one of the bucks that I did hunt one afternoon on the velvet hunt that's been hanging out behind my grandmother's house is still there every afternoon. So we still got deer around. Hopefully once these start coming up, deer start kind of hitting them. They should be starting to get hard horned to lose their velvet in the next two weeks. Uh, it's August 31st, so we've still got a little less than a month before our opening day. Uh, hopefully all this pays off. Don't have a lot of acorns this year on our place. Uh, don't know what happened. You know, there's a few uh, red oaks, but not many white oaks. So hopefully these plots come in good and come September 24th and on, we can get some deer on the ground. All right, so as y'all can see, the big and beasties come up really nice in just a week's time. Uh, got a good rain on it uh, Thursday night and Wednesday night. It's supposed to rain again tonight on that we just planted. So hopefully this stuff just keeps coming. We don't hit a real long dry period. Um, as you can see too, we've really opened up this plot uh, where it was kind of had a few trees over here to the right. They're all gone. Uh, you can see the, we left a sycamore that my wife shot screwy under on our first year uh, there. But, you know, more space. You would think these deer with that thicket there and that thicket there, they can just slide out here during the rut. Super excited about this season. All right, today is Sunday, September the 2nd, um, Labor Day weekend. I haven't had any time to get out and really do anything this summer because uh, me and my wife had a baby 10 weeks early. So we've kind of been up in the hospital for the last two months. But uh, got to come home this weekend, do a little bit of work, and uh, check some of our Cuddy Link cameras that we've had out for the last couple of months. Uh, landowners been checking them every so often. Figured that I'd come refresh batteries today and check the stump where the trophy rock was, and they've really dug it out this year. Um, right here at this particular camera is where we're getting our biggest deer on this farm. He's a big 10 pointer. We haven't named him yet this year. Um, no, he's a mature deer. Had encounters with him for the last three years, actually. So I uh, passed him last year as what we thought was a three year old. Um, so we think he's a four year old this year, but he could possibly be five. But we're hoping that this uh, card pool has some good news for us because found out about three days ago the neighbors hit a buck right down here on the highway at the bottom of the property and uh, said it was a pretty good buck. So we haven't seen any buzzard circling, so we don't know if he come over here or went over to the neighbors, but we're hoping that it wasn't the Big Ten or one of our good bucks. And hopefully whatever buck they hit, it, wasn't, it didn't kill it. So. Uh, hoping whenever we check cards when we get back to the house that we'll have uh, have some good fortune on them. We've got these cameras linked to where they go to one home camera in the bottom, but 
uh, reason we're actually coming through and checking them all today is that whenever the landowner checked them a couple of weeks ago, a couple of them were dead. So pictures weren't getting sent all the way to the home camera. So we figured we'd just take today, refresh all the batteries, refresh all the cards. That way we can start fresh. Season's opening up in three weeks. So uh, that'll give us a chance to stay out of here when we really need to and uh, give the deer their time to get moved into their ranges and everything before we start hunting them. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Midwest Whitetail Southeast Show. I wanted to take a few minutes to kind of catch you up on some of the bucks that Cindy and I will be chasing this year. But before I talk about them, I've really got to talk about this guy. This was our number one hit list buck in 2016 and 17. Had a close encounter with him on Halloween day 2016, but I just didn't quite close the deal. Never saw him in person last year. Had pictures of him up until about mid to late October, and he disappeared. Kind of had a bad feeling because he was usually fairly regular on our lease. We would get pictures of him multiple times a week, pretty much every week all year. And uh, no more through the end of the season. So my goal shed hunting this year was to find one of his sheds, which we had never done before, and you know, make sure he was still alive. Well, I found what I did not want to find. I came across his body in a creek bottom. But at least now we know he's not around. Don't know what happened to him, but we're not waiting on him to pop up on camera again anytime soon. This year, we've probably got more mature bucks to chase than we have in several years. We've got quite a few good looking deer this year. Uh, we've got four bucks that we've got a lot of history with that we'll be chasing. One of them is a buck called Boss and he's a six and a half year old tank that's just the biggest bully on the property. I would really like to see him die this year. I, I would love to kill him. He's not going to score much but he'd be a great trophy. He's just He's basically sort of an eight pointer, just not much rack at all, but one of those deer you'd be really proud to put on the wall. We've got another buck that I got a little bit of velvet footage of back in July that we call the No Name 10. He's just kind of a really pretty 10, nothing special about him. He's not a giant. And I don't know 100% that I would shoot him, but he is really a pretty deer. He's one I'd have to make a call on at the time. And uh, then we've got two more deer that we've got history with. One of them, last year we named him the Young Ten because he was just a really good looking ten last year. Looked to be a three year old. Well, that four year old this year, he is really blown up. I'm not going to say that I would shoot him if I had the chance, but he looks so good, I would really be hard pressed to pass him. I don't know. But he's. I don't know that anybody else on our lease would pass him, maybe Cindy. We've got one more deer that we've got a lot of history with. Uh, he's a really old deer also named Caribou. Some of you may remember in 2016, we had a lot of pictures of him in the summer and early season, and then poof, he disappeared. Well, spring of 17, I found part of his rack broken off. Didn't know what happened. I know he had disappeared, so we thought maybe he had been hurt in a fight and had died from his injury. Didn't see him at all last year in 2017. This year he's back. And he's a very, very sway back old man. Another similar to Boss. Won't score anything, but will be a tremendous trophy just for his age. Would be a very cool mount to have on the wall. I, I would be proud to have him on my wall. We've got a couple of more bucks that we really don't have any history with, but some good bucks nonetheless. And one of them, I think Cindy or I, either one would shoot. It's a big non-typical five by three that she named V-Man. And there's a couple of guys that run with him that we're undecided on. They look like they may be four year olds, but they're both really good deer. One of them is a nine pointer that has forked G2s. And there's another buck, a Crab Claw 10, 
that's in the same area, those last two, they'll, they'll be tough to pass, but uh, we'll just have to make that call when we get there. I know Cindy will probably pass them, but she's got a little better willpower than I do. That kind of wraps up the deer that we're, uh, bucks we'll be chasing this year, but you never know. We're liable to see bucks from the stand that we've never seen before or don't have on camera. So, you know, it looks to be a, a really good year for us. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think we're two weeks from yesterday season opening so it'll be here before you know it as you can tell it's 94 degrees today here in georgia and i'm sure it will be opening day so in about two weeks we'll see you and we'll if nothing else we'll show you us sweating in some camo so looking forward to keeping you guys in the loop and what's going on here this year and uh thanks for watching